Another thing I want to talk about is food problems. A couple of my friends are having food problems right now. Um, I found out, and it took me a very long time, that I'm aspirin sensitive. I think it was 33 before I found out I had an aspirin sensitivity. You could develop them later on, so maybe that's what happened, but... But, I don't know. Um, and aspirin, aspirin, ibuprofen, acetaminophen, Aleve are all related. And aspirin is, is in a lot of natural foods. Including citrus, especially tomatoes, especially tomato sauce. It's in beer, it's in wine. Um, and the, it was so insidious that at one point I ended up weighing 129 pounds. Because I just couldn't find anything to eat. That was many years ago now. So it actually took a doctor prescribing medical nutrition, which was, or elemental nutrition, which was literally just this little powder mix. that you mix up with water it tasted really bad and that made me feel better so it pointed to the idea that I was had an allergy or sensitivity even though I had tried giving up a lot of things I gave up meat for over a month I did at the time eat a lot of soy Soy milk. I had already given up dairy years before. Dairy, anything with preservatives or artificial colorings in it. And... Kind of became... A health food person. I ate it. And a lot of the food I ate was all... Made by myself. I didn't eat out. And... Most of the produce, I think I shopped pretty much exclusively there at Fred's with some brands that I had discovered, but at Nature's, which became Whole Foods later on. And I tried all sorts of different foods. I don't think I ate hamburger for more than 10 years after the whole mad cow thing. But eventually, just doing a food journal was the best thing I could do because because it was just so tough to find the things that had the aspirin in them. And I asked the allergist at one point um, what contained it. And it wasn't until the, I finally found it on the internet years later. Everything that had it in it. And I tried to elim eliminate those foods. Because these things would affect me more than a day after I ate them. I would just feel run down. Sometimes I'd feel hot and sick for no reason. So for me, it was going down to almost zero and just finding a few foods that I trusted and I would take the medical food. Later on, I found hemp milk to be to give me good nutrition and get me through a bad bout. I had a lot of gastritis. I'm stumped here a little bit. But, I mean, for a lot of people, and this is true of my mom, if they just give up the big four allergy causers, dairy, uh, soy, wheat, and eggs are the four big ones. That's called the elimination diet. And then you can slowly add them in. When, if your symptoms subside, you can slowly add them back. But for me, it was much harder than that. Eventually, I had to just go down to nothing and use the elemental food because at least that would I would you know that would keep me alive and, and make me feel better and let me heal up because I, I'm sure at the time I had ulcers and when your immune system is really you know your immune system gets really hurt if you're mal malnourished and I certainly was and that can cause even more allergies and sensitivities if your immune system isn't healthy so 
And back then we checked a lot of things too. We checked. Um, we checked for parasites. If you have something called uh, pylori in your stomach, it actually is impervious to stomach acid. It's a bacteria that burrows into your stomach lining. And it can drive your immune system crazy, and that can cause increased allergies and sensitivities. So I've got to get to this. I've got to get that brick. But for me, it was really literally going down to almost no food and slowly adding ones back in. And eventually, I found a diet that I can handle. Meat was a big problem for me. Meat, and I was tested for an egg allergy and never showed anything. I was tested for antibiotic allergies that are common in meat and showed nothing. Oh, this is going to have to be one of these. So I think that did it for me. That is what finally did it. I, I just kept a journal and I tried different foods and I tried different brands of foods too which I think helped I started to focus more on organic and later on uh, antibiotic no antibiotic ever and that helped and I'd already cut out preservatives so what's in here Um, and eventually, I, you know, even some of the organic brands let me down. And I don't know why. I even was eating buffalo at one point for a long time when I didn't eat hamburger. So, it's been rough. It was really rough for me. And then later on, I, I was... I was over 40 years old before I figured out the meat problem. And it's still somewhat of a mystery. But I just know what I can eat and what I can't. Just almost trial and error. But anybody who has problems should give up anything with preservatives, less cured and so called processed foods. Try to eat more whole foods, whole grains if you can, because they're better for your blood sugar. And less refined sugar. And probably less cured meats. I love a good hot dog. I can actually eat some organic hot dogs. When I was in my 20s and was trying to live cheap, buying hot dogs was answer but man I, I definitely had ulcers from that okay so we've got to get that okay, there must be some way that I gotta get through there because apparently I have to yeah I, I don't I've got to activate this to come down, and that's got to be that, yeah, okay. But, you know, my mother had terrible IBS later in life, and when I became her caregiver, she actually had some money, so I said, you know what, let's, let's try giving up the dairy. She ate a lot of cured meat. And she actually did try some Whole Foods type of things. And I'm dead. Apparently I don't have any breaks, so... Alright, let's try this again here. Oh, weird. Okay, that's weird. At least it didn't make me do that again. But with Mom... The woman was either terribly constipated or terribly just running to the bathroom with 
diarrhea. Oh, missed it. And got her to give up. I mean, she, she would just have cottage cheese every morning. And she would have, um, not necessarily junk food even. She, but she would have the cold cuts for her lunch. It was the easy thing to do. And, and I get it. Those were her comfort. Oh my god, I'm going to have to get through this. Okay, got through it. I just needed to focus on it. So here, okay. So I've got to go. I've got to do it again. Okay, so here we're gonna have to put in a portal here. We're gonna have to go back. So we can go back as easily as I came through. Just took one attempt. One more attempt to get through here. Alright, so now I put the blue portal there. And I need to put the gold portal. I think you can run in this game, I don't know. To put the gold portal right there. And that should activate. Very, very good. A complimentary victory lift has been activated in the main chamber. Complimentary victory lift? But one thing about changing the diet, it's hard to do. You may not feel right. You need to make sure you keep your nutrition up, so I, I highly recommend getting, making sure there's a good protein source. Wild caught salmon's a really good idea, especially if you're having any kind of like. The enrichment center is committed to the well being of all participants. Cake and brief counseling will be available at the conclusion of the test. Thank you for helping us help you help us all. <laughs> ah, funny stuff. But um, salmon was a really good go-to for me. It had to be wild caught. Some of the Atlantic farm-raised salmon has coloring in it. You want to avoid that if you can help it. It may actually have, I'm not sure, I know farm-raised shrimp has antibiotics. So... So find some protein sources and, and see if you feel good on them. If you don't like fish, find a good, maybe even organic chicken, which is cheap. If you're on a budget, you can still find good healthy food cheap. And then, um, and just stick with that. And then potatoes. I never had any trouble with potatoes. Just don't buy like a mashed potato mix that always is going to have bisulfites in it, which are will make you sick. I mean, my God, they'll make you sick. Oh. Okay. So just, you know, cook your own food for a while. This means you can never eat out. Food for a while, 
get to just a few foods that you feel good on and then slowly add other foods in and try to keep them as simple as possible. For me too, with the, the thing that really drove me crazy was herbs and spices sometimes can be very high in aspirin-like products. And it boils down to now where onion, no problem. Uh, salt and pepper, no problem. Uh, and basil especially, I definitely don't have any problem with it. Dang it, I missed it again. But once you get to that level where you feel good, add things in. You still may want to keep a detailed journal. There's apps for that now. That'll even... If there's a paid app, I forget what it's called, that actually will search for any correlations between your symptoms and your um, the foods that you're eating. Because it can be over several days, too, so it really can be frustrating. And then just get yourself in the mindset, too, that it's only temporary. If you're feeling deprived of a favorite food, like, God knows I love pizza, and I still do... I still think I have a tr some trouble with dairy, although I think it has to do with histamines and the level of histamines that are in my body. I think my body just creates more. So you want to avoid any fermented products like that. But that's, you know, get through the, all, you know, finding allergies first, and then if you still have trouble, then you look at a high or low and low histamine diet, which is essentially what I'm on now in addition to avoiding things that I think are troublesome. Man, I cannot hit this. Why can't I hit this? There, I got it. Just needed to shoot ahead a little bit. Okay, so... 